Come on, desktop. I know that sometimes Tom tells me every time he gets on the, the Zoom, everything's different. And today seems to be one of those days, like I got an update I wasn't aware of. And now I'm having a dickens of a time sharing my desktop. And it usually just sits right there and says share. There we go. Like a Jurassic Park, everything goes wrong. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> Okay. Can you see my desktop now? Yes. Okay. This is the, the pop-up screen. I guess you could say the welcome screen. Okay. And I have two modes of operation. So if I go into my pop-up here, I can run it in standalone mode or I can run it in JMRI mode. Okay. Now, it, I'm really not tied deeply into JMRI. What I do is I read their XML files. So if you're using JMRI and you've already got all that data entered about your cars and your engines, I can snatch it out of there for you and you don't have to re-enter it all manually, right? And I, I also let you put the stock onto the reader and program it straight out of JMRI. XML file. So you don't have to manually enter that data that way. And I suck that RFID tag number back into JMRI so it can use it. Um, they don't do much with it right now, but they have plans for it in the future. And then standalone mode, it does a lot more. That's when it actually goes out and reads the readers, all, all the different readers. And um, so let me just walk through the menu structure for you. Over here, I've, I've got configure, okay? And I ask you, you know, what uh, COM port you're on and where's your JMRI files located? And it, that's how it goes out, links to them. And then uh, import the files. From here, you, if you click import, it sucks all that information in and stores it for you. You only have to import it once and it saves it from that point forward. Okay, and then polling, because I'm in JMRI mode, I don't do any polling. The, the, the concept here being that if you're using JMRI for operations, you're already getting a cut sheet, you know, a, a manifest to work from. What do they call that, a pull sheet? Or I forgot what the term is. But you, you get a, a list to work from. So I, I don't uh, collect anything in JMRI mode because JMRI is doing all the tracking. But if I change it to standalone mode, then you can enable and disable polling. Of course, I, I don't have my hardware here to hook up, so I can't, if I try to poll, it'll, it'll just fail. Okay. Locations, I, every, every, one of my menu things has a, an about that kind of tells you what it's for and how to use it, okay? But under locations, uh, list cars from reader. So here I can, in my computer, uh, reader A, which is active right now, reader A. Um, these are the cars that reader A is tracking, okay? So I can track those. And I can select which other reader I want to see, read it, you know, and check on. Uh, add text to a, a reader. If you if you use it in standalone mode, instead of having referred to it as reader A, reader B, and so forth, I let you come in here and enter a human name. You know, like you you probably have a yard name, you know, something like that. So you could enter a yard name in here and it makes more sense to track it that way. Uh, and then I can, if you're using JMRI and you've sucked in all that information, 
then you probably already got names for all your locations. So I let you come in here and then I let you use this table and you can say, uh, you can check the ones, this is reader A and I want it to be linked with uh, permanent location, Brody Box Company and Lara Cole Company, track number one. So you click those and then that gets saved and your readers will now follow those names. This is kind of the meat and potatoes right here mm -hmm. under engines. And I use engines to keep from confusing with JMRI, but it's a train, okay? But I just use the term engine so that you don't think you're, you're following it with a JMRI train. So you can create a train you know, I let you put in what type it is, what model it is, road number, road name, even who owns it. So that, you know, if you're a club or you have people coming to your house, sometimes you have the same stock. And, and so which one belongs to you? Which one belongs to your guest? You can roll it over to reader and it will show the owner's name. So you can create an engine here. I, I save it into the computer. And if you've got this one little box checked, right? I let it, I write all that information out and store it in that little rice chip under your engine. So that whenever it rolls over any reader, it'll pop up and show you all this information. But the, it's a, so the actual information is stored in that chip? I thought it was just the number and the information be stored no, in the computer. No, but the, no, the, all, that, all that information is stored. Oh, okay. Okay. So it actually gets read, it reads it all in, huh? Yeah. When you, and then, yeah. then when you run it over the reader, it'll tell you, okay, this is a box car, yellow in color, and this is its road name, road number. And that way you don't strain your eyes trying to read it. Okay. <laughs> and so it, it programs it out. And I do the same thing over here under cars. Okay. So if you're creating a car, uh, you know, you, you get the same information here, except that instead of model, it, it stores color, okay? And again, all that gets stored out to that little rice chip underneath the, the, the rolling stock. So that any reader you roll it over, you can find out what that information is. Okay, uh, assigned to a location. So here, I always have a permanent engine to call permanent one, okay? And I'm gonna assign it to reader A, standalone location one, and I'm gonna assign it. Now, you, if you follow my mouse across here, it tells you you currently have engine permanent one assigned to standalone one, location standalone one, which is reader A. And I, just so you, you know which one you're working with at the moment, now that I have an engine assigned to a reader, I can go in here and I can say, pick up or drop off a car. Right? And so at this location, I have uh, a tank car, it's white in color, but I wanna pick it up and I'm gonna you know, move it to a new location, right? So I'm gonna pull that car and it pulls it out of that location and attaches it to the engine that you're currently working with, okay? Then you drive it on down the rail to the next location. And when you get there, you wanna drop it, right? So you highlight it and you drop it, okay? And it takes it off that engine and drops it at that location. So now you can track where your rolling stock is at. Now, um, let me close that up. This is, if you're sitting in front of the computer, you, you use that screen really as, as a, maybe a cleanup tool after, the, after an op session. You know, somebody has left a, a car in the wrong location. So you need to put it where it belongs. And, and so rather than use that five finger, pick it up, fly it over and put it down where the computer thinks it is, you, you can go there and just move it within the computer. And then you're not struggling to move your stock. Now, I'm gonna drop out of uh, the share here for a minute. Okay, and come back on. That's what these buttons do. If you're, if you're locally 
at your reader than what I just did on the computer screen, you would do with these momentary push buttons. So the first thing you would do is you drive the engine up over that reader and you push that button and say, this is the engine I'm working with and assign it. Now that it's assigned, then you would- Yeah, so it's assigned it. a jam, is, is that gonna JMRI somehow then? And No, no, it's just, is, in my, just no, in my software. Just okay. your software, okay. Yeah, okay. So my software knows what engine's sitting on that reader. Okay, mm -hmm. and so now it knows if you're gonna pull a car out of that yard, you would go, go snatch that car, pull it out over the reader and say, pull and push the pull button. Now my computer pulls it out of that yard and assigns it to your engine. Okay, and then you would run it on down to the next reader and you would assign it, that engine to that reader and then say you're gonna drop that car. So you would run it up over that reader and then you would push the uh, drop button and it would, the computer would move it out of the engine and put it into the yard location that you're dropping it at. So now you can you know, run back and forth and read it. And, and on top of all of that, it has the, you know, the local display so that even if you're using it, it, JMRI mode where you're not using all these buttons. If you roll, if, you know, if you need to drop a car from your manifest, you roll your train up over that reader until bingo, there's, there's the one I'm looking for. Now I know that's the right red box car that I'm supposed to drop. Okay. And, and it saves you from struggling trying to read the side of that, that piece of rolling stock. And I used to go to Johnny's house and he's N scale. That was that was a nightmare <laughs> trying to read those numbers on N scale. <laughs> so now my LED screen, you know, puts it up there in a half inch letters. So <laughs> nice and easy to read. And it was a, a lot of fun to build. Uh, I'm I'm gonna give this stuff away. You know, I, I've got a uh, a printed circuit board made. And all the all the materials you need, um, so you can build these things for oh about eight bucks. If you know if you're willing to wait and buy the stuff in bulk from China, you know. Uh, and what did you say uh, that they're ninety nine cents? The card, the, the the little rice things, ninety nine cents each from China. Yeah, the Arduinos you can get them down to about ninety nine cents each. Okay. Well, I was thinking about the little the, the RFID markers. How much are those? Are oh. oh those, that's probably the most expensive part of it. That's a little grain of rice. Yeah. And where I'm getting them, they're, I think they're $3.29 each. Okay. Okay. But of course you get a little bit of a price break if you buy them yeah. in lots, you know? So, uh, but for me, that, that convenience, three bucks, you know, that's, that's pretty cheap. Uh, <laughs> and you don't have to do them all at once. You can do them and, you know, Tell your wife, I, I want, you know, I want 20 of them for my birthday and I want uh, 20 of them for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you don't tell your wife anything, actually. That's the... <laughs> well, well maybe tell, your wife, tell your wife, I got 20 of them for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim, I guess with the last May you did that uh, thing on J.M. Ryan signaling. <laughs> yeah. And then you lit a fire under me and I got a. Well, about about thir a third of my lab signaled down in August. I did that presentation, and when I did, yes. Um, now you're going to get me distracted again with stuff like this. Um, <laughs> we may have to actually start doing some of this. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> well, it, it's a divert me from scenery. Divert me from scenery. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'll have a, by next month. I imagine I'll have a working model that I can, you know, actually put a car on the rail and let you see it. Okay. Display and all that yeah, I'm definitely oh, i just wish i had my own layout to put it under but i've made progress on that too uh, i'm i'm going to do a my next layout's going to be on the texas midland which was a, a short line that went out of business in 1930 i believe it was okay where so was it? texas midland yeah but where was it in um, texas in, in texas here but where I went, oh, do we even know? It, it, well, it ran through Midland, Texas. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a, it's a it's a fictional. 
No, no, no. It's oh, no, it really was. wasn't. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it went out of business in the 1930s. So it was yeah. all steam. Uh, and I, I got lucky in doing my research. I ran into a man named John that has the actual track plans for the whole short line. So after the 18th, he says, I can come up and see him and get copies of those, of those rail plans. So that means then I can come back and figure out how to shrink it down to fit my garage. <laughs> what do they call that? Selective uh, compression, right? Yes. Right, so I have, I'll have to go through that process and then I'll begin. I'm, I'm almost tempted because of the room I have to go to the end scale but I just got so much invested in HO that yeah. in, in the end scale, it's harder for me to work. Go ahead, Don. Just use compression. Yeah. Don't change scales. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to stick with that. Don't, don't go down, go up. <laughs> <laughs> My eyeballs agree. Yeah, if you go to end scale, you have an even better excuse for doing all this RFID stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Tell your wife points. it's a health issue. You're going to strain your eyes if you like, if you can't see those car numbers. You know, it's, a, it's a health issue, <laughs> health and safety. Is this similar to a, a classification yard? Um, you could use it in a classification yard. Yeah, you know, you could you know you could use it along an industrial spur anywhere you you know you need to pick up and drop off a car, in I've, I've made it flexible enough so that you can use one reader in a convenient location. Maybe it's going to control uh, six or seven different uh, industrial rails. Okay? okay, but but you can assign those six or seven industrial rails to that same reader, and then in the computer, you know it's going to be on one of those seven rails. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, <laughs> but. I had a lot of fun. I, I, I learned yeah. a lot. Boy, I learned yeah. a lot. <laughs> so what did you write? What's your software written in? Well, because it, it was, I wanted to kind of stir it up with JMRI. Mm -hmm. JMRI is written in Java. Right. Okay. So Java is, is a difficult language. It's so highly structured. It's a very difficult language. <laughs> okay. And... Then um, I came across JMRI has a scripting ability that I use, and they use mm -hmm. JSON for scripting. Mm -hmm. So JSON is the stepchild. Okay, it's a marriage between Python and Java. Okay, so Python is a nice, beautiful, simple language to program in. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so nice, so simple. But, it, you know, it won't use Java. So JSON was born. And so JSON is, is Python for Java. And it uses the same simple language structure and everything. So I, I wrote it in JSON. So that meant I had to learn Python. I had to learn JSON. I heard, had to learn Java. And then on top of it, I had to... Uh, communicate out the, the serial port and be able to talk to 25 asynchronous devices. Right? That was my yeah. next question, the real time capability. So it'll actually, you can read those in real time from Jython. Real time. And it'll be like, a, yeah. 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 So I've, I've got that done to where I can uh, read all of them, at, you know, and keep a, a real time. It's, it's probably, uh, maybe if I had all 25 of them going, you might have a, like a two second lag, but that's not bad. Not, not for. So with, oh, so with JThon though, is you do it in JMRI or is it you have to buy a buy a JThon interpreter or something or a compiler yeah. or what is that? JThon is free and it's okay. a compiler and okay. you, can, you can just type in JThon, J-Y-T-H-O-N. Right, JSON okay. down, mm -hmm. download, and it'll give you an exact and bingo, you're in business. 
So, you know, it's real easy to install. It's already in okay. JMRI. If, you, if you're using yeah. scripting in JMRI, you're already writing in JSON, so. Yeah. Okay. All right, well. <laughs> what has everybody else been up to? Willie, you've been working on yours? Yeah, I've still been doing collecting. I just, um, in between dealing with a lot of house family stuff and um, yeah, but other, uh, but other while I've been collecting on um, some of the cars, the bastard cars for UP, which I just recently acquired. Um, I forgot the name of that car I got. I got that one and I got Selena, which is next. Oh, the, the, uh, the Missouri River uh, Eagle car, which is oh, okay. two, uh, two of the last cars in that set. And right now I'm getting ready to go into collect and finish collecting up on BNSF. So okay. basically that's what I'm gonna do next month. Have, but have that's what I've been doing as of late. Have you got a display wall for all this stuff? Well, I'm in an apartment, I'm not in the house. Oh, that's right. Is it HO so, scale? Is it HO scale? That's HO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically that's all I've been doing. But other than that, I've still been collecting. Uh -huh. And um, keeping up with other other classes and everything. Now I got it in the case if y'all want to see it. Let y'all see how I'm. I, I, yeah, pop yeah. It up there. certainly. It's, it's showing time. Right. time. Scott, that's not fair. I don't have any coffee. This isn't coffee. This is iced tea. <laughs> I, oh. I had hot tea. So <laughs> they're all different beverages here. Yeah, that's some of it right here. That's the Colorado Eagle I got right here. And it is right there. Wow. Um, I got uh, Harriman. And I bought two of them by mistake. Yeah. Um, it is right there. Same car. And I bought those by mistake. Are, so, um, but that's are those, okay. those uh, the modern ones? You know, they were put on their like on their you know their excursion trains now. Are those old? Are those? Because I know that these. Are, yeah, these are. These are what? Yeah, these are here. These are heritage cars. Heritage cars. Yeah. yeah these, uh huh. I got them. Um, I got some of the pool cars right here. Now this one, the bottom one down here, I bought that one some years ago. So I had got an early start on it. But over time, I've been buying some pool cars, which is right here, as y'all can see. And um, that's all uh, what I've been doing. Some of those mainline, I, mainline cars, you uh, put grab irons on them and stuff like that? Because they those are basically the same as the Protos, but they don't have grab irons and I guess some other yeah. things. Yeah, pretty much. They make them for so you know, making them more affordable so kids can get into it. Yeah. <laughs> so then, but then if you want to make it real, you can also add the grab irons and everything else. Detail. They come with detail kits. They separate. Right. So you can put them all on there to make it much more of a main uh, a protocol if you wanted to. Are you gonna do that or? Yeah, they they come with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I haven't done it to mine yet. But I'm, I want to do it. Yeah. I guess that'd be a almost good workshop because I just when I've tried it before, I have not had good results breaking drill yeah. bits and not getting nice even cuts and all that stuff. So, yeah, the next car I have is called the Challenger. That's another one. Yeah. Um, another pool car right here that I started off with. Uh, this one, I just the Walter Dean, and I got that right there. Uh, another pool car. So, uh, so if you want to do the city of LA, you could pop pretty much mix them in together. So that'll save you time and money for a, short, uh, a quick shortcut. Instead of having to buy the whole set, some of the cars come, come from that set. Now the next car I have is called the city of San Francisco. Um, and then I bought a little, put a little Milwaukee road in and I'm trying to get the Sky Lounge car. Mm -hmm. So that's that same UP scheme with it. This is called the uh, the Superdome, and I think this is car number. I think this is fifty five. Um, 
I, I had the next car I got is called the Columbine or the Superdome. Yeah, I had that in the orange, the Milwaukee orange. Yeah. Well, they got them now in both schemes. They re, they did it just ain't too long did a, a, a rerun on them. This is uh, called the Columbine. This is called the Columbine car. And um, what else? The Texas Eagle. It's right there. Can I put this on share? Say that. Can I put this on share screen? Sure, go ahead. Let me let me give you permission. Okay. Willie, are you buying all these from Walters or on eBay or? I'm buying them from different shops that I've been buying from from years, say like uh, Western Depot, Overland Hobbies, uh, Hiawatha Hobbies, um, some from down here, but I never mess with eBay. Well, you should have a pop-up down. Okay, yeah, I got it. Okay. This car right here comes from the city of Los Angeles. This is car um, 6,000, the dormitory, if you want to make the uh, Howard Fogg car. This is what they begin. They started off with. You just got to get the uh, de uh, details for it. This is it. It's called the Placid Waters. This is another uh, city of Los Angeles car. So I just added, put a little city of LA in there. You know, so so um, I, I explained the method. This is called the Willie James. <laughs> okay. And I got the, uh, this is the flag car. Oh, yeah. So 5769. They still got plenty of them out there. If y'all want to get one, they, they, they still got a handful out there, but it ain't that many left. Yeah. This is called the Sunshine Special. This is a, a 44 seat coach. The Portland Rose. Well, That's you another. Billy, you're going to need a city block for a long Yeah, I'm just saying, I hope you have a long wall. <laughs> <laughs> I got the city of Denver. That's a uh, diner. That's one of three diners. Then I got the Katie Flyer. Uh, the uh, cards, uh, another diner, the city of Los Angeles itself, a di uh, diner. I got the Overland. That's another, that's a, one of three diners, the last diner I, that, that I got. Uh, this is called the Ocean Scene, another car from the city of Los Angeles. Uh, this is the Art Lockman. Uh, baggage tool car. And I got the city of Portland, which is a dome car. Then I have the, uh, not recently, um, what I said a few minutes ago, the Missouri River Eagle. And um, this is my very first car that I bought for the set, which was the Cato's Union Pacific Sunset business car. Mm. So, which I did contacted Cato to see if they could make any more. But uh, other than that, that's that's how most of the UP. Now I got, I did buy some of the e-sets, which is over in my other room. So do y'all want to see that while I'm online? What'd you say was what the? I got the e-locomotives. Oh, yeah. E-89. E I can grab them real quick if y'all want. Y'all want to see yeah, them? Yeah, go ahead. What, what about, I thought you said just Santa Fe cars too, or or just, just UP? I got UP and then I got some Great Northern and Santa Fe because I'm getting ready to start on the BNSF portion. Okay. I'll be right back. Scott, have you built any more houses? No, I've, work work is really picked up for me. Oh, so I have, I've been busy for the last two months now. I've, this is the first time I've been in the train room, so or my <laughs> workshop. Yeah, I've I've missed you a couple couple months in a row there. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I I just flew in. I spent last week in Vegas, and I just flew in about midnight last night and got to bed about two o'clock. So I'm still just kind of drowsy in another world. So. Mm -hmm. I could see why you had your caffeine there. Yeah, I had to make a, I go through about a half a gallon of tea every day. <laughs> yeah. Like my caffeine on the rocks. Okay. Okay, I got more. Um, I got this from Scale Trains. This is one of the black uh, water tenders for the UP for uh, 4014. And they, they got them on sale for 70 something dollars. You can go to scale trains and they they should still have some. They just did a recent did a uh, recent run. Yeah, I got one of those in yellow not too long ago. That was yeah. Okay. And I got uh scale trains uh, water tender set, the uh, pre-2006 set. That was made when uh 3985, which I have in my collection. So this hmm. so that's what that is. Um, then I have uh, the post-2006 uh, water collection, uh, water tender scale trains. So that's that's what they look like. Then I got Walter's Proto uh, EAE9. This is uh, number 914. And this is uh, AB set 953. From the excursion, but actually these units I got them from for the city of it was made for the city of Los Angeles set. Hmm. And I I got these because I couldn't find 911 or 951. So I was able to uh, get hold of these real quick. You gonna renumber them? No, I'm gonna leave them just like that. Because sometimes it's best to leave leave it like that instead of renumbering them. So that way you have the original, you have the original artifact. Yeah. This is uh, my very first steamer. This is 39.85, and I bought this some years ago. This is the first run. Yeah. And um, this is a rarity that I bought, which is uh, 38.05. If those y'all in Rio Grande, this was uh, this also came from Lionel. Lionel. Is that that die cast metal? Yeah, that's the die cast. Yeah. Is all that stuff DCC? Yeah. It's all DCC. And um, I have a big boy. This is another one along with 3985. This is a 4020. And it's a, a big boy. It's one of the many big boys. It's also one of the original ones, right? 420, uh -huh. the one that yeah. came through Houston, isn't it? Oh, 4014. That was, a, oh. that was 4014. Okay. Yeah, some of them were scrapped. But 4018 is up in Dallas. 4014 was in Los Angeles, and I forgot where, um, I think, I know where 4023 is up there in Kenneflick, up there in uh, Nebraska. Right. There's eight, eight of the 25 or so. That was the number. Uh-huh. But other than that, it's that's, nice. that's, yeah, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> It'd be a long so, haul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm almost finished with this first half. I don't know if they're making a second half. If y'all want to get in on it, they still got some cars for the city of Los Angeles if y'all wanted to. And if y'all want, they, but they've been selling fast, so. Yeah. But that's it's just, this is a quarter of my set. I got, I still got much over there in that other room. But um, I'll go back over some of the cars that you can get from scale trains. Now they did make these. I'm gonna take some of them out of the box so y'all can see them. And I think they still got these for sale and they're still selling them. Now this is uh, a water tender from the, uh, from the pre 2006 set. And this is what it looks like. That's what it looks like. It is DCC, so it's as, uh, this has two lights on each end, but it's DCC. Drop it down a little bit. There you go. Yeah. There you go. See? Yeah. So that's that's um that's one of the uh the this is from the pre 2006 
uh, era. These cost about, I think, about eighty dollars for them. So what happened in two thousand six? Did they change the paint scheme, or they? Uh... Right, two thousand six when they started doing the UP excursion program, and they added on to it. They started in two thousand one. Right. Back during the uh, world when World Trade happened, then they started uh, the company. They started decided to start making a business train. So what they did was some of these cars they come from big boys, and some of them come from um, these here. They come from uh, gas turbines. So the pre 2006 they come from gas turbines. They were made for uh, for the Challenger. Mm. Then the ones from um, which is this right here, this the black scheme. That's what that came from. But they made this for 24, uh, 4014 mm, yeah. later on. And they got these for sale. They also have some civil uh, uh, sir, uh, maintenance of way uh, gas turbine water tenders like this in silver, silver and black, and oh. silver and black. But uh, yeah, these here, they could, they were made for uh, 39 Okay, She was running back then. Yeah, she may never run again. <laughs> yeah. But it's sad enough they 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 said they stopped they she's no longer gonna be running again because they don't have the parts for it. Now the next car, this black car is similar to this. I'm gonna show you how this one. And this car is made for 4014. Now when I got it, it's kind of damaged on the uh, on the uh, the rigging. It's a little bit damaged when I got it, but that's what it looks like. Mm. So that's for that was the sign for forty fourteen. So that's what it looks like from end to end. It only has one light on one end, so it doesn't have two like the um, the pre two thousand six water tenders. I guess what the forty fourteen burns oil. Mm -hmm. I suppose the Challenger, I think, would burn coal. Is that? Well, they both they converted them both from coal to okay. uh, oil. Okay. So this is the later one that was made for uh, 2014 when they first decided they wanted to uh, get her back to running. Yeah. Okay, the next one, this is the pre-2006 uh, water tenders. This was made for the 844 and uh 39.85. That's what it looks like with the flag on the side. Then you got one that's called the uh Jim Jordan. This was the first tenders they made. Yeah. That scale trains produced. And you'll what's, see these. Hmm? What's the uh, significance of the name Jim Jordan? I think when Jim Jordan, I think what he was a, um, I think he was more like more like a uh, like an author, but he was he more like a uh, he was a when he was a, a metal worker, right? And I think I think he was an author or a metal uh, a metal worker, known metal me, uh, metal worker, like a boiler maker, a uh, pipe fit, boiler maker, pipe fitter. Okay, this is this one name is also named Jim Adams. So these two are named. This is the first set they made, but they named them. One is Jim Jordan. One is one is Joe Jordan. Excuse me. One is Joe Joe Jordan, and one is Jim Adams. Okay. Now this is the Joe the Joe Jordan car. And that's what it looks like. There's a small lettering on there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's this is the uh, pre-2006 set that y'all see right here. And then these costs, I think there was uh, like uh, almost $150 for these set, this two set right here. Yeah. Now, what well, I have here, decide, really, how did you decide on using all this Union Pacific stuff? Oh, the UP? Uh, some years ago, when I got the military, I applied as a track laborer. Now, at first, I wasn't too far in the UP, and then <laughs> over time, I, as I grew into the hobby, I started taking an interest in it. 
And I didn't, that didn't happen until after I left the military in 01. Then I started taking an interest in UP. And as soon as I saw that air this train, that's what started it. Yeah. Then my interest, I grew, uh, then my in interest really grew into collecting. And I said, no, you got to go and collect it while you can. So that's, that's how I got into it. I, I got into Milwaukee because my wife likes orange. <laughs> 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 so she thought it was a pretty train. So I got mm -hmm. Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> What I have in my hand right now, this is one of the many units of the uh, of the uh, the city's uh, set. This is the uh, uh, city of Los Angeles. This is one of its units. This is uh, E8, E9, 914. That's what it looks like. It's DCC. And um, and it's just one of these, just, just the A by itself. So this was one of the uh, last units that UP had made as far as the cities. Now, the only careful thing I would suggest is be careful and watch out for those, those, the ear parts, the mirrors and the rain sheds, because they can easily be broken. So you got to handle it. So when you pack it in, you got to make sure what you got to make sure it's packed in correctly, because don't you'll break the, uh, the, the rain sheds and the, ear, and the mirrors could be broken off, which right now I'm repairing that right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Packed it in, wrong. Okay, the next one is nine fifty three. That's nine fifty three. Okay. Now this is an A, B, and set, which I got B behind me right now. This is a, the A part of it. This is 953B. And it is to it's to uh DCC. Wow. Okay. Oh so, yeah. That's the uh, diesel excursion part of it. Uh, have those run in a while? It seems like I haven't seen them out or heard of them running in a while. Maybe you just don't hear about it as much as the steam when steam runs. They run them every now and then, but they keep them down at the Cheyenne shops. Yeah. They just they run the steam more than they do the uh, diesels. A few years ago, they had a power shortage. They actually pressed those into freight service. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but normally, you'll see them on those city trains going to and from the West Coast, like the city of San Francisco and the city of Portland and all that. Yeah. We called it the city of everywhere when they combined them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next one I have in my hand is the Big Boy 4020. This is one of my first uh, steamers for you, Pete. I had yeah. a Big Boy O gauge when I was a uh, boy. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Now this one has the original yellow light. Unlike the 4014 has that bright candescent. This has still has that first manufactured yellow uh, yellow lamp they put in there. Okay. I have a 3985 that's in my hand right now.
It was like the first couple of things Atherin did in the, under the Genesis line, I think, back years ago. Yeah, when they took over Tower 55. Yeah. Okay. David, how long have you been in, in the trains as a hobby? I, as a hobby right now, counting, it's been uh, 44 years. When I got in it, I had to self-teach myself. I started at self-teaching myself. That's how I, when I began. That was back in grade school. <laughs> so my first, very first set was a Lionel Mikado from my dad because he had a Erie Lackawanna set. And that's what started it all. It was old scale then, but then I started, and when I got into grade school, I moved from there to HO. Uh, what I have in my hand right now, this is 3901, 3801. This is the Lionel diecast locomotive. Oh, yeah. That thing is heavy. <laughs> and, and that, <laughs> Correction, 3805. Huh? And that's DCC? Yeah. I, I knew Lionel had a control system, but I didn't know they, they ever built anything with DCC in it. Yeah, this is one of them. <laughs> okay, this is Rio Grande, 3805, correction. Yeah, okay. I'm going to show you all some of the cars that I have over here. So it's, there's many, but I'm going to show on a few. So I have, I have this, so many of them. Now, this is the one I was talking about earlier was the Missouri River Eagle. This is a, a Visa Dome. That's a that's a uh, beast of dome car. And that's car number 70, 7011. Next one I have in my hand is a 44 seat car. It's called the Katie Flyer. Okay, this is a diner. This is one of the three diners. This is the city of Denver. This is car number 5011. Are all those lighted? I think they're all have. But these are, it's only a few, I think one I got was lighted, but the rip, no, none, I think all these are standard. They're all standard. Okay. So that means you have to put the light, you have to buy the light along yeah. with it. Okay, this one I have in my hand is called the flag call. This is uh, 5769. That was on that Bush Field train, I believe, behind and behind the yeah. Ford team. Yeah, yeah, they, they had a uh, they had another car, and they repainted it, but they made it a museum car. Mm. Yeah, it's called the UP Experience. Oh, that's mm -hmm. right. The P. Yeah, good. when they stop, people will walk through there and see all. That. Yeah. And this is a ten six sleeper. This is called a Willie James. Hmm. 
you pe- keep all those nice and clean so you don't have to weather them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, nah, I ain't weather these. <laughs> I, I, mm, man, these ain't getting weather. Yeah. <laughs> this car here is called the 11, uh, this is called a, a 11 dB sleeper. This is the Placid Waters. This is a Pullman pool car mm. from the city of Los Angeles. And this is the baggage dormitory, 6,000. Okay, they use this as the base model to start the Howard Falk uh, car. And they just about to add the detail to it. Now, if you want to put a uh, Milwaukee Road in it, get you a Superdome. Oh, yeah. Because Milwaukee Road helped UP in the Midwest to get his trains to the West. I think they're the only railroad to have those, weren't they? Or, or the Great Northern might have? Uh, CN, Via, Chicago Northwestern, and this one. Okay. Okay, this is the Superdome from the Milwaukee Road. Hmm. <coughs> and I think, yeah, this car is a standard. It's not lighted. Does UP still operate that on their train, or is that? No, nah, they don't have. They don't make. They don't have no more. Have that. I didn't think they had that. Yeah. Other than that, that's it. Bully, do you have that's like a test track? Huh? Do you have like a test track or something that you run them on? Or yeah, I got a track. I just, I just ran them during the holidays, and I tested them during the holiday season. Like that back Bachman snap track or something like that. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I have it. Yeah, I've, I run it around between two bedrooms up here. And sometimes I'll run the trains <laughs> around. Yeah. I've got a four by eight layout in the garage. It's about 30 something years old. It never got finished and I lost interest in it. And I've got mm-hmm. to figure out what to do with it. If I'm going to demolish it or see yeah. if somebody wants it. Yeah. You know, when you put 13 switches on a four by eight sheet of plywood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then that, yeah. Well, I, did, good. I did it on a five by 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still adding track though. I'm trying to get some crossovers, so I have to keep taking them cars off the track and putting them on different tracks. So that's what I'm doing right now, the DCC crossovers. But I do have I have plenty of track because I'm in a big two bedroom apartment, so I, I got plenty of room. Yeah, shame we don't have basements. Yeah, yeah. Yes. well, that'd be a game changer out right here. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things that you UP fans might want to know about is the. First Friday of next month, the Petticoat meeting, they're going to have a presentation from the Bush Library of them moving the 4141 into the uh, museum. They Mm -hmm. pulled it up from spring, uh, parked it on a track, used two cranes, loaded it on a special transporter, moved it to the museum. It's been unloaded onto a display track. It's still covered by a specially made canvas cover and everything, but uh, the deputy director of the museum is coming to the Petticoat meeting. It's the first Friday of next month of May Mm -hmm. at uh, Valley Ranch Barbecue, which is right at 249 and Spring Cypress. And uh, 
the, it's a very informal social club. Uh, to be a member, you just give them your email address and they send you notices of the updated meetings. And, uh, but it's, I've seen a preview of it and uh, I think it's gonna be a pretty good presentation. So mm -hmm. I saw a picture that, I saw the engineer right next, I mean the uh, 4141 right next to the mm -hmm. track up there in College Station. Are they gonna actually move from there to the museum or is it gonna stay right next to the track? It's, it's actually moved to the museum oh, on a okay. display, mm -hmm. uh, display track and they're building a building around where they've located it on the display track. Mm -hmm. The official unveiling will be coming up sometime in the future and uh, possibly when they have the official program and everything, the, yeah. the members mm -hmm. of the National Railroad Historical Society, mm -hmm. they uh, contacted Chuck Lynn to possibly tour his way out. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. As a matter problem. of fact, I do have that model. And I do have that model in my layout. In my 41, 41? Yeah. Yeah. I know Chuck has it in, in O. I've got one in HO. There's, I guess, a, a, a Atherton made one. I think uh, is it's, I think a couple of different manufacturers made it. Atherton made one. Walters made, Walters one, made one. And I think uh, because of MTH is being bought out by uh, Scale Trains, Scale Trains, they may end up making one. Yep. Um, and I think B I is either BLI that's coming out with one. I think. Yeah. Um, other than that, this is a, this collection. Yeah, thank you. All right. Jim, you mentioned Johnny Scott before in this end scale layout. Johnny passed away. And yes, he widow, did. Yeah, his widow has asked us to remove the layout from the building and everything. And we yeah, made I, I was talking with Frank about that. And, and they went up, they disassembled it. And yeah. actually, they're, they're doing, a, they're at a swap meet today. He's trying to sell some of his stuff for it. Um, no. I forgot since it's end scale, I, I didn't go. Um, plus, I had the meeting to, to get started. So. Yeah. Uh, since it's end scale, I wasn't interested in it, but I spent two days yeah. there disassembling it. Oh, you um, helped? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I was the guy underneath the layout. Oh, that fell <laughs> to you, huh? And I also uh, spent some time at Frank Wyatt's helping him with some turnout problems he had underneath his layout. Yeah, just before the pandemic, uh, he asked me to put a 100 ohm resistor. He had one turnout that was chattering. So I still owe him that, unless you fix that for him. Uh, there is a, one spot that uh, I think it's fixed that uh, he was having a problem. There is a resistor on that one and I think it's not shattering anymore. Okay. But uh, I, that isn't what my main focus was, but I think it's fixed. Okay. Uh, a couple of other things. I helped Chuck a couple of times on his layout on some problems and everything. Again, underneath the layout and uh, one of the things that I've been working on for myself and everything, I've been converting that switch stand to a mailbox. And uh, when I put it up, initially the cow catcher, uh, the cast aluminum cow catcher was sitting too low. So I remade the drivers in a larger diameter and mounted those on it, which that took care of that problem. And then the steam cylinders, I used some one inch copper tubing and the copper end caps to make the end of the cylinders. But that didn't look right because the uh, end caps were, had, were too long and everything. So I took those off and I've shortened them up and they're now quarter inch long and I've got them painted silver now so I just have to remount those and I think I'm just about done with the mailbox switch stand and I'll uh, get a picture of it next time. Good. So then I'll move on to other projects. I've got plenty of them. <laughs> yeah. Well next Tuesday I'll, I'll be going over to Frank's house to run trains 
do operations. It's going to be over a year since I've done any operations. So, so who's out? Frank, Frank Wyatt. Oh, Frank Wyatt. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He, he's been invited me several times and everything, but I just, uh, with my wife's broken foot, uh, too many things going on. Yeah. Dave, do you do any uh, operations? Okay, so yeah, I got several things. Yeah, so talk about operations. I've been actually operating with my son. We just did one, I guess, the other day, just trying to figure out a good operating scheme. So I got, we, we, I had, I had a scheme back before all COVID started that I was using and then I improved upon it or I thought it was an improvement and we ran it and, and I guess it was an improvement, but there's still some things we can tweak up. So I'm, gonna, I'm back, I'm thinking today about maybe working on getting a, even a, tweaking that scheme. But I do wanna have an operating session. You know, I work with those guys out in Katy. So uh, as soon as I get this thing tweaked, I probably have an operating session in the next month or so. Do you do, you do timetable or CTC or? Eh, it's just it's just a, a train order basically a list here's okay. gonna run these trains and I, I might put it I used to on my old lab did it with a timetable but I'll probably get I wanted to get work out the order of things first and maybe put a timetable to it yeah yeah to make sure that everything does nothing gets jammed up and <laughs> like make sure it works yeah and of course with, with the signals that that you got me fired up on last year <laughs> in fact I guess I could show you I think even though I just got this limited thing here and I could show you where yeah, I, I'll, I eventually want to do something like CTC and have people follow around and they can follow their signals. But let's see if you can. Oops, this, this cord doesn't go as far as I thought it did. Okay, well, I don't know if you can see that. You guys, there's a signal. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really see too much. There's a good but, focus. Yeah. So you got a signal there. And oh, yeah, over here, see a couple of signals on that helix right there. You see. Anyway, there's. You can see that that red signal above that little shed there. So, yep, that's all been put in the last year. So, but um, I guess several other things I'm working on. So, um, one thing is, you know, Willie's talking about these passenger cars. That got me, once again, that got me thinking about. He got those Walters mainline cars. I make, oh, gosh, about five, uh, six, seven. I got, um, I got two mainline. I think I got one mainline car with all of them Walters proto cars. Right. I know, I know it's a couple of men, but they, mm -hmm. back when they started those, maybe five or six years ago, they had undecorated. Yeah. And they're like only 20 or 25 bucks each. So I, I was going to, I wanted to make a Texas special like the MKT. So I uh -huh. bought, I bought like seven or eight of them. I like to run eight car passenger yeah. trains. So I bought eight of them. And I took, I've only done one so far. So here's, yeah, here's what I, I need to paint them up. The mm -hmm. worst part about these cars, you got to twist them to get them open. Yeah. <laughs> so they're very hard to come open. Yeah. So I did this years ago, and, and now Willie kind of lit a fire at me. So maybe I need to uh, get around to painting the rest of them <laughs> and get them <laughs> custom paid for the Texas special here. So I mean, it's really nice. So, well, you know, IAC got, got them too. Who's that? Uh, IAC. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, International Hobby Corp company is down here in Texas. They got them. Oh, they do? Okay. And uh, I think Concord got them too. Oh, and actually in the actual Texas special colors. Uh-huh. Okay, I'll have to check into that. But yeah, those mainline cars, they're they're I think they've raised the price on them now, but they were they are twenty four ninety nine when they first came out. And I thought that's an incredible yeah. deal. And yeah. the only difference between those and the proto is like you're saying to add some details or put a lighting kit in. Yeah. They're similar to this one right here. This yeah. uh the uh, RPO car right here. Which yeah. I had to add six trucks because I was trying to mimic the uh Howard Fogg car, the exactly. uh, power car. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you have to add uh a lot of details to them, but they made them store ready so people they could buy them ready to run, put them on the track, they could run. Yeah. So they making them try. They was trying to make them more affordable <coughs> so people can buy them. Right. But you can you can modify it. You bet. And uh, yeah, that, that they very did a good job with those. Made them in all the popular roads. And then my other thing is, it's like these are actually protos. These are identical pass. These are identical passenger cars. You can see. That. Uh huh. Yeah. One one's for the Cal. One's for the uh, Santa Fe El Capitan. The others. Yeah, El Capitan. Yeah. And then the Amtrak took it over later, I guess. Yeah. My problem mm -hmm. is that this one works great. This one derails. It and derails a lot. It derails, yeah. And if you can, oh, hold on, let's see if I can see this, show this. I don't know why it's a problem on here, but you see that little step ladder, right? Like yeah. Right here. Yeah. The wheel doesn't can't turn enough. It gets it constricted by that thing. 
on yeah. a 30, on a 34 inch radius curve of all things. Yeah. But, uh, but the other one goes fine and they're are identical. I can't figure out why. I don't, I don't want to just sit there and cut off the stirrup. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm afraid I might have to if I want it to operate. If yeah, just might have to cut it off and move it over a little bit. Of course, it's kind of an important car in the scheme because you want to run your, mm -hmm. the, the early, I guess those Santa Fe high level cars with the early M track, you need to have a car like this. So yeah. One suggestion, to, yeah? maybe you might try taking and swapping trucks just to check that out. To That's see. a good yeah. idea. I hadn't thought about that. Huh. Those, ain't those, those 41 N11 trucks, right? That you have on there? Yeah, whatever the whatever the truck is that they... Yeah, that's a 41 N11. Okay. That's a good idea. I'll have to try that because I got a couple of extra trucks or I could even swap with the other car and see if it makes a difference. See if mm -hmm. it moves the problem over to the other car or not. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I like that. Okay. And I guess a couple other things real quick. Uh, so in scenery, I've been working on a town. It's supposed to be a, a slum. And it's interesting, there's not a lot of, no, no one, none of the manufacturers seem to want to make things for slums. I mean, I love that someone <laughs> manufacture a burned down building. I, I think old uh, Tyco, not Tyco, one of those things had a, they might've had one, but anyway, but they all try to make these real pretty buildings. I'm trying to get some really ugly buildings. What, we buy ugly houses? You've seen those billboards? Uh -huh. <laughs> and are so you, I've got- <laughs> Are you building a town or a, or a, a residential area? No, this is a town. This is like, I got, it's, it, it's an industrial area to part of a town. Okay. So it's not residential. Uh, but, did, uh, what's it called? Uh, downtown Deco. Have you looked at their stuff? Uh, no, uh, not specifically. Hang on just a second. Yeah. Uh, so you want, you're talking about making it like an urban setting? Yeah, an urban setting. A suburban end, yeah. No, yeah, urban setting. Yeah, it's a, kind of a rundown urban setting. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I put some of the easy stuff in there. I've got a, you know, a hobo camp and, Something like that. Yeah, that's downtown Deco. What? Yeah. Yeah, the bail, the bail bonds. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have a bail bonds place. Yeah, that's downtown Deco, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, maybe these pictures. I don't know if these pictures. Yeah, are that's any... better. That's aren't they all hydrocal castings? Yeah, they're kind yeah. of hard to work with or get yeah. get accustomed to it. But I, I use epoxy to put the corners together. And then fill in any kind of like stonework or brickwork. It's well, I'll have to check that out. That's exactly the type of stuff I'm talking about. Well, <laughs> hang on a second. I'll show you a whole bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple of other ones in the series. Let's see here. Because I'm in my train room. So, yeah, you know. Uh, that's not making else. Let's see if I can do this here. Uh, okay, that's those are yeah, that's more of a okay. Uh, that one. I guess I need to figure out how to reverse the camera real quick. Let me try to. <laughs> there's a way to do that in there. Are you on your phone? There I go. Yeah, on, yeah on your phone there is yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a, I've got a good backdrop that's kind of a gritty urban look, but I need to put the buildings out in front of it. Yeah. But I've got, I don't know, about 10 of them or so. I went on a spree of buying those. Huh. I'm you more still of a make those? I mean, I guess, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll have to check that uh, out downtown. Deco. I'm more of a structure guy than I am a train guy, I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, you can see all the Campbell kids. Wow. <laughs> And these are these are the boxes Golly. that are still uh, still got stuff in them. I've already thrown away the ones that I built. So, you know, yeah, you have more of them than I do. <laughs> what do you do? With, what do you do with your structures after you build them? Do you display them? Well, right now they're just sitting here on shelves. So, cool. And weather them, and and you know, there's a whole pile of them over there. Yeah, I see some city classics, I guess, and DPM. He puts them in a contest that wins first place. <laughs> yeah, this that's is what a, he does. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Campbell's kit that's, I put two of them together. Okay, I don't know why I just lost myself. Can you see me or not? Well, we've no. got a little box that says Scott's iPad. Oh, great. 
This is why you lose me when you say JMRI. <laughs> cool. Well, for some reason, I think I lost picture or something. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see if there's a way to. Uh, I probably hit something on the side that. There, you there go. we go. I hit a, hit the side of the iPad and it turned things off. Uh, yeah, I started with all these DPM buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, they were like fifteen bucks a piece and more painting than assembling. Yeah. Um, most so of my I, good one. No, see, real quick, oh. DPM. So it was at the Stafford show, I guess the last one we had just before COVID. I went in there and there was a guy who had a box of those DPM buildings. He must have had about 20 of them in there. Mm -hmm. He sold to me like for 40 bucks. And I said, there's just, I mean, they're already assembled. <laughs> just, mm -hmm. and it was just the four walls. They weren't painted, didn't have roofs or anything. But I said, I said, this is great. <laughs> so I pay, happily paid 40 bucks to get 20 DPM buildings that are just kind of like that. So I got, if I can use those, you, know, you can paint them up and do what you want with them. But uh, they may find Yeah, I've pretty much been building structures for 30 years, I guess. Do you ever use those Walther's modulars when they still had those? I I have a few of them. I just haven't used them. Yeah, I bought a bunch of those that show also because I got a plan yeah. for a big building for those. But and uh, all these things down here, are, all these tubs are full of rubber. Was it you, you full of uh, what you hmm? said? Oh, it looks like trains. Yeah, full of rolling stock. Rolling uh, stock. Yeah. Wow tour of my train room <laughs> yeah i wow. built this thing to keep all my wood and stuff together organized and well this is my tour of my train room <laughs> is that all alcohol over there yeah yeah I I just, up. yep <laughs> there there was a while you couldn't get that stuff i i stocked up too <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, you know, going to make different levels of Indian ink, you know, one, yep. two, and three oh, two yeah. spoons in each one, and yep, never got around to it. <laughs> so, anyway, so I'm building this town, and so uh, I've, I've got some scenes, and like an overgrown graveyard, and I found this actual one kit from one little scene from Europe. One of those is a, it's a it's a car on cylinder blocks. Someone stolen the tires with a couple of <laughs> around them, and just you know, just some stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> which tracks in the street and you got to do some switching on those tracks to get to the, the, the lumber yard there. So anyways, that's what I'm working on. And then the other thing I guess has happened, I guess Bob Subol sent out a couple weeks ago a, re a request for people to volunteer at the Rosenberg Road Museum. They need some people to look over the Rachel trains. If you remember, I don't know if you got that or not, but I went ahead and took up Gene Mangum and it was actually from Gene Mangum. And uh, so I went down there and told him I could help him. I guess that was a week ago, maybe 10 days ago. And so uh, they gave me a one of those big plastic tubs of filled with just stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All rolling stock and then just I like, sorted it out, got the junk out, got the track trained, got the box cars and stuff. A lot of them were just blue box athern. And I think people just donate them when they're, you know, from a spouse dies, they just donate here, take the stuff to the museum. And so I, I probably pulled out about 30 blue box athern diesels. Mm -hmm. so I went through and cleaned them up and yeah, and made sure they all worked and stuff. And there's about six or seven DCC engines that they act, they actually use those on their display lab. So I took those home and cleaned them up and reprogrammed them and made it so their sound wasn't as loud as it was because a lot of them were really, you know, how that DCC can have really be loud sometimes. And so uh, I've been working with them to try to get their train collection in order. And, if you've got some old DC stuff that, that they don't want, JC sponsors a train club at, at Hall Middle School. So right. Oh, they'd yeah. be glad to have anything you've got left over. Okay. I'll remember that because I know that people donated. They didn't even know what it was. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. He showed me a whole closet of boxes and stuff. A lot of it was, wasn't trains, but it was you know, structures and tracks or tools and scenery materials, all kinds of stuff. So... But you said he could probably use any of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Huh? That's a good yeah. point. I'll um, I'll tell him that because they uh, I don't think they have any plan for what to do with this. They're not trying to build a layout. I mean, they've already got they've got several layouts that are donated. They just run run the trains in circles down there when people come into the museum. So that might be something they could do. 
because they have more blue box at them than they could ever use. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not, yeah, so I'm going to help them keep that stuff going. And of course, then they wrote me into being a docent. So, <laughs> go. so I told them I'd come down there about once a week for a few hours. And since I live in Sugar Land, not very far from there. So yeah, I went down there when they tore the, uh, the one layout it was in a room and then yeah. they were going to redo the whole thing. So I was underneath that layout. Oh, so you're one of the volunteers. They said there's a, some volunteers got together and got that working. Is that says that was part? That was you. Uh, you know, I, I was one of the ones tearing it apart. Tearing, then, okay. Then well, my, uh, because of COVID, my work just kind of died, and I yeah. started having looking for things to do, and then then everything just picked up all of a sudden. So yeah, but I've been working on Tower Seventeen. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! So you built your own there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And the only thing left to do is all the little balusters, and which yeah. I don't think I can be that bored to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I was going to uh, uh, You're do the interior. Put an interlocking machine. I mean, I've got the switch uh, box in there, whatever it's referred to as. Yeah. And it's got some lighting in there. And I've got it on a base where I can put a nine volt battery in here. This yep. was going to be one of my composition competition turn ins and. Is that completely scratch built, or is there? Yes. Except for the windows, I guess. Are they even? Yeah, I've got, I've got, you know, these windows Grand that lines. I buy. Yeah, northeast. But I had yeah. to, I had to manipulate them all because of, I didn't have, you know, you got to, you got to fudge a few things, but uh, trying to get it as close as I can. I still have a problem with, uh, you know, this. Uh, it's called fish scale. Yeah. Siding. I need to find something to make that look better yeah it just it, uh, that's printed up on paper with paint over the the ink and uh it still has the the fish scale look but it just it just kind of looks like paper you know yeah. it doesn't yeah, it have doesn't the, the three-dimensional look yeah. to it that i want 3d printed 3d printed yeah. yeah i could do that then you have to paint it well, that's what that was. What was weird is I, I diluted the paint and painted over because I printed it up. I do a lot of AutoCAD work, so I had printed it up and just diluted the paint. It was on here, <laughs> I, I painted it, and uh, here's some versions of it. That's where there was the paint was too dark. <laughs> yeah, but I really want to try to find some fish scale type siding. Have, have, Scott, have you ever heard of uh, Fusion 360 AutoCAD? Yes. I, I work with a very old version of AutoCAD back when you could buy it, you know, instead yeah. of reading it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Fusion 360 has a free version that that lets you work 3D. Okay. And you can you can draw that all up and send me the STL file and I'll print it for you. But I need to draw it in in Yeah, but but I mean with your AutoCAD background, you'll pick that up. I, I picked it up easy with no background yeah. at all. So if you just look at that other 360, it's a fantastic is, uh, program. Cause I, I use an old it's like AutoCAD two thousand and one or something. Yeah. I I have to actually keep old computers to be able to run the software. Yeah. Wow. Because new ones won't run it. Yeah, but uh, if I sent like you know I did this as an AutoCAD, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, but it's a uh, one of those Sears mail order houses or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I've I've got it drawn up in in AutoCAD, but it's it's in I guess considered two D instead of three D. Yeah, no, I've never been good at at converting. I've tried oh. to draw in three D, and you just get kind of lost. No, 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 no. You draw it in two D. You sketch it out in 2D, and then you click one button and you say extrude, and it makes it as thick as you want it to be. And then you you uh, you take two pieces and you say combined, and it makes them one unit. Or you can say cut, and it puts a hole in it for you. Fusion, you'll love Fusion 360 with with now your this, skill set. Uh, what's that? With your skill set, you'll love Fusion Fusion 360. You know, like I said, right now, work work is just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
you know, all of a sudden you, you, you go from doing maybe one or two jobs to all of a sudden having 10 jobs. And it's like, well, they, better than having no it, jobs. <laughs> you know, well, I was hoping to retire. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I figured that'd be a good excuse to, to retire is I don't have any work yeah. to do. So. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, so the, the Rosenberg Museum, so yeah, they have the Tower 17s, I learned you're going through there, they have a caboose there, they've got um, a, a nice outdoor G-scale layout of Richmond and Rosenberg in the area, and, and they talk of, they say there's room there to put another, like an engine there or something, they're trying to work in one night. So why don't you just, if you've been to Galveston recently and seen all the engines they have stored down there, the Santa Fe, is, the BNSF is disposing of all, all their 30-year-old power, the Dash 8s and SD70 Max and all that stuff. So I said, there's, there's several hundred engines down there right now just sitting in the yard in Galveston. So I told him, like, just ask BNSF if they'll drag one up the line there and <laughs> pop it over onto your property. It's only about 50 feet. <laughs> I, I, think no, Galveston, that. <laughs> I think Galveston is having a show today. Are they? Yeah, okay. yeah they have one this weekend. Cool. Yes, yeah, this weekend. Hmm. Okay. So. Anyway, the only other comment I have is that, yeah, seeing all those blue box atherns, I haven't worked with those in years. That really brought back some memories. Yeah. And it's, you realize how far the hobbies come when you see what that, that those are, those are state of the art back in the 1970s and 80s, early 80s. And now, and then see what, and then looking at what Willie just showed us. And it's like, yeah. wow. <laughs> I'd be like, afraid yeah. to break that stuff though. It just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm more somebody wants to play with the trains instead of. Yeah. Well, that's what that's blue box is good. You couldn't break yeah. those if you tried. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. Well, I was showing you those boxes on the floor. There's about 72 in each box because I, I was looking for a specific flat car. And one time I just started counting how many fit in the box, and there's 72 in each oh box. Gosh. And mm -hmm. there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes of, of those Atherin box cars. Most of them. I, my grandmother lived in, in Howitzville, Texas, and I grew up in Houston, Texas. So we'd go down alternate 90 to Howitzville. So I'd see the Southern Pacific and the Cotton Belt. And that was mm -hmm. kind of my my wheelhouse, I guess, that I, that I collect. Were there still I got a bunch of that over the, Were there still tracks in Howitzville at the time? Uh, as a little kid, I, I think when I was about 10 years old, they, they got rid of them. Yeah. So, How, so what year was that? She, let's see, I was born in 59, so about 69, I guess, I something like okay. that. It was always I used to, yeah, as a yeah. kid, you know, you'd sit in the back seat of the car and it was boring, boring, so you'd watch the railroad tracks, and right? Mm -hmm. Watch the signals, and, and uh, you know, yeah. oh, there's a train coming from the other direction, and yep, and uh, that, that was kind of my you know, we'd, we'd go down alternate 90 and go by the uh, the Imperial Sugarcane building and yeah uh, all the little small towns that were just a blinking light type thing yeah and that's kind of i guess uh you know you were talking about old uh uh structures or whatever that's just kind of like they're all old structures back then so <laughs> yeah it's just, there's a lot less out there then <laughs> mm -hmm. like you go through a town like east bernard or or oh, yeah. Uh, yeah oh yeah you know, the, the old car dealership is still there and it's been painted over two or three yeah. times. And, and Eagle Lake was a major junction. They had the Santa Fe line coming through there and the SP meeting yeah. and, and all that. That was mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. And now it's just mm -hmm. not even a turn out there, I don't think. <laughs> no, there's that one. They still have a little spur going down south of over 90 to this. Some well, I know they got, a, they got a caboose sitting out there in some kind of museum, yeah. but I've never gone in it. There's a caboose, but before you get there, there's still a spur going down to the south there, maybe a half yeah. mile to some type of tank car facility or something. I think it might be a repair. I don't know what it is. You're talking about uh, UTLX. They moved it to, I think, to Louisiana. Oh, so that's, they don't use that anymore there? That's over there by the city dump. Yeah, that's gone. They moved that's it gone. to uh, Louisiana. Okay. Wow. Well, Willie, did they have, you know, all those sand pits that are out that direction? Were they hauling that sand out on, on rail cars? Uh, I think are. they're still doing it. Oh, yeah. there's. You, I mean, yeah, I live in Sugarland, so I see those sand trains come by all the time. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you go if you go down alternate 90 before you get to the Colorado River, you cross the track that goes, you know, where the old, that, that old line, and it goes south toward the Colorado right. River bottoms where they get the sand. That That's a heavily used, shiny track. Because mm -hmm. that's where that uh, barge channel is, eh? 
Well, and they used to have a scrap yard down there too, where they were, you know, scrapping out cabooses and old cars. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, they had that other site over there on Jensen where they scrapped those uh, GP nines, the last of them and a couple of wide vision cabooses over there. That's over there in the Northeast part of downtown. Or by the Hardy street shops or. Yeah. Over the, well, way up, you know, what Jensen and, uh, and uh, 23rd Street shops used to hit Hardy Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They used to scrap them over there. Okay. Hmm. Okay, guys, I, I hate to say it, but I'm going to have to shut us down. I'm, I'm down here in the community center and got to be out of here at noon. And once I hang up with you guys, my computer goes into a, a recovery mode because I'm recording this and it has to run a while. So I need to, to shut us down so that I can get out of here on time. All right. So when's our next meeting? Mm -hmm. uh, the second Saturday of next There's month. Always second Saturday. Okay. 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 Right. And like I said, I'm down here in the community center. I'm fully vaccinated. They're mm -hmm. open at a hundred percent now. So he was telling me that, um, um, Don, you were saying that you had to have six feet apart. They were just telling me this morning that that since they're at a hundred percent, there's no longer any spacing. Good. Okay. That must have just changed recently. Yeah. So, you know, if you're vaccinated and you feel like it, come on down here, and I'll I'll probably do this again next month. So. Okay. Thank you for doing it. Yes. It. Thank you, everybody. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>